Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane, and it's New York Fashion Week. And as you heard, Governor Cuomo gave the green light for us to have New York Fashion Week right here in New York City the capital of the fashion world. And in just a moment, I'm going to be interviewing fabulous designer, Rian Fernandez. And we're going to see his very unique, innovative collection for this season. So keep watching, darlings. More of the interview, Zoom interview, coming up. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane. And as you know, this is New York Fashion Week, and Governor Cuomo has given us the green light to have Fashion Week. And I am here with a world-renowned designer. He has done amazing things. His fashions are artistic. They are innovative. They are quite different from what anybody else has done during New York Fashion Week. And he has done many fashion shows. And I'm going to give you a little description of what he is all about. Leon Fernandez always had a heart for the arts. The expressive quality of his personality can best be seen through his masterworks. Perceived as designer, he is likened to a museum filled with thousands of masterpieces colored by joys, ripened by pain, together with his countless blessings. His artistry has brought him to many places. Leon studied fashion at La Salle College of the Arts, Singapore, a celebrity fashion designer and a wedding couture from his majestic Philippines. His ensemble was featured in Vogue Italian magazine, a piece okay. of his garment. His artistic journey continued when he made his most talked about dress of Miss Thailand. But we're gonna get into that later. But anyway, welcome to my show, fashion designer, Rian Fernandez. Welcome, Dolly, welcome to the show. Hi, Kanya, I'm so grateful and honored to be part of your show. Well, now my first question is what I always ask every designer, tell us, what inspired you to become a fashion designer? Tell us the history of the journey of how you became the designer that you are today. Uh, I was born with a heart for the art. So I started in theater uh, when I was in college and then I became the costume designer. And from there, uh, I was inspired to do pieces, which uh, I think, um, that is so near to my heart. So I, I love fashion. So that's why I, I become a fashion designer. So that's really, did, so it started when you were a little boy when you had this vision of being a designer or did this like happen later on when you went to college? Yeah, it was during my college days. I see. What, what made you, what was it about the fashion that you said, this is what I want to do? I really don't know because I started as a singer and then um, oh, you my can dream say, you know, Oh, so you're really in show business. You really like show business, don't you? Yeah, my dream is to become a singer, but then I, I was uh, molded as a fashion designer through time. Interesting, fascinating. So now you have designed for some of the most beautiful women in the world. And um, I wanted to ask you about that as well. You design, you do design for many beauty pageants. In 2017, you designed the dress uh, for the Grammy Awards in Los Angeles, California. And in 2019, uh, you dressed Miss Cambodia. And in 2019, you designed for the Miss Universe pageant. Tell my audience, that experience of your first designing for the Grammy Awards. What went into that? 
at first I was pressured because uh, it is one of the highest uh, awards night in the whole world. So I am very honored and be, to be part of that, uh, to be dressing up celebrities like Chris Mincy during that time. Who was it that you did design for? Was it, was it a variety of celebrities or was it just one person? Just one person. Uh, her name is Chris Mincy. Okay. And tell us about the gown you designed for her. Uh, it's not a gown, actually. It's a, a cape jumpsuit. Did for she her. specifically say what she wanted, or did you have an idea of what you wanted her to be um, at the awards, or what she should look like? Did you give her your recommendations, or did she tell you, this is what I want to wear? Can you design uh, something for me? How I collaborate. Uh, I collaborated with uh, her stylist, and then uh, we came up with an edgy look. So we we don't want her to be wearing like a gown. So instead, we made the jumpsuit, a trendy a cake jumpsuit for her. How fascinating. Now, you also designed for the Miss Universe pageant. That's pretty amazing. Tell my audience about that experience. How did that happen? How did that... How did you get to design for the Miss Universe pageant and who did you design for? Uh, I designed here in the Philippines uh, numerous uh, national pageants. And then uh, when uh, the Miss Universe happened here in the Philippines, I was one of the selected fashion, Filipino fashion designers and I was selected to, to uh, dress up Miss Thailand. And at that time, uh, when I dressed her up, um, it was like a talk of the town of, or talk of the, the country, the, the, the gown I made for her. Explain That's, to my audience about this gown. What did it look like? It's a Filipiniana. It's a butterfly sleeves terno. Uh, it's a traditional Filipino uh, costume. And then at the same, that year also, I dressed up also the evening gown of uh, Shira Burchell. Miss Canada during that year and then it all started from there and then after every year I was a designer selected designer for Miss Cambodia also I, I looked at some of your uh, designs and they're quite beautiful uh, not everything you design is edgy a lot of it is very very elegant and very glamorous um, you're very versatile. You know, there are some designers, they will only design a certain type of look. But I noticed that you are very artistic, but yet you are traditional in making uh, like a traditional evening gown. I mean, a really beautiful evening gown that not, every, not everybody's into edgy clothes. Although I will say the last collection you had, I thought was very edgy at New York Fashion Week. It was quite beautiful, but it was quite edgy. So um, what makes it, I, how you are so dual? I mean, it's, it's really quite evident in your designs that you like to do both. Why is that? Why do you like to do both? Um, I make sure that uh, when I'm in beauty pageant, I, when I'm creating a gown for a beauty pageants, for a certain pageant, I, made sure, I make sure that uh, I know the personality of who will wear my gown? So we, I will. I I have to collaborate with uh, with her uh, once in designing, and then I will in there. I will just ingest my uh, my uh, aesthetic, which is the beadworks, and I make sure that uh, every gown that I make is uh, so feminine, and then I want it to be also wearable and not just so edgy. But on the other hand, during the New York Fashion Week, I was. Uh, I was um, asked by the pandemic to do a fashionable uh, personal protective clothing. So in order for us to, to be uh, fashionable at the same time, so I made an edgy um, personal protective uh, clothing line, which I was see, launched I in. Gonna, we're going to talk about that, but I just want to ask you first, before we get into the clothes at this last collection that we saw, during New York Fashion Week. Tell my audience your association with high-tech motor. How did you get involved with high-tech motor? 
uh, last year, last 2019, um, they invited me to be part of the High Tech Moda fashion show. And then uh, I was very honored and because of uh, my uh, high respect to the, to the organizers, uh, I was uh, very impressed that year. So this year, uh, we collaborated to make a show for the New York Fashion Week. So that's interesting. Now, how many seasons have you shown your collections at New York Fashion Week? Was last year the first season? Or no, have you uh, done others? It's my third season now. Um, my first season was in 2018, September. And then the second season is with High Tech Moda, uh, 2019, and then um, High Tech Moda also for 2020. Uh, do you like be working on high tech Mona? Yeah, definitely. I will work with them again. Okay. So now, uh, tell my audience, what was the inspiration about this season's collection, which is really quite um, innovative and fabulous because I don't think any other designer did what you did. Um, because of the COVID, it's getting a lot of publicity. Tell my audience what your inspiration for this particular collection was all about. My inspiration is about the Wayfarer, which is the traveler on foot, because uh, it's so dangerous to go outside, uh, walking outside uh, without any um, armor like that. So I, I thought of, about uh, making or creating a fashionable PPE which can lessen or have an extra protection for, for the ones who will wear it. And the fabric, I understand, repels germs. Explain yeah. to my audience how you found this fabric. This is amazing. The fabric is uh, water resistant. So we have test, uh, before making a collection, we have uh, uh, seriously uh, uh, tested uh, some fabrics so we came up with you in, in using uh, microfiber fabrics which is uh, we think the best uh, choice for the collection mm -hmm. okay where did you find this fabric here in the Philippines or maybe in the other there is an available uh, fabric how many pieces were in the collection there are 17 pieces uh, in the collection, pieces in the collection. I see. I, I watched the show. It was quite amazing. I must tell you, I was very, very enthralled, um, you know, Thank you so much. with all the pieces that you put into the collection, that you had 17 pieces. Um, did, did High Tech Motor, did you have any... Um, influence in the models that were walking in the room it was was that completely high tech modus job uh, in selecting the models uh me and high tech model collaborated the go sees in choosing the because i want uh the collection to be all races so there is an asian or uh, there is other different types of uh who will wear it yes and you had my my good friend Shuri Corso, her daughter Julia Corso. Um, yeah, because I want to show in my collection diversity and equality. Yes, yes, which is so important that we we want to emphasize that that's very very important that we do emphasize diversity that all people can look beautiful and be functional in your your designs. Um, so tell me, uh, Rian, what is your biggest challenge when you design clothes? My biggest challenge in designing clothes is um, getting the right timing and the inspiration. Because for me as an artist, it's very hard to, to just do a piece without a heart. So I think uh, the timing, the, the proper timing and then the, the inspiration should go within. I, well, I read that. I did read that about you. It's all about heart. I read that about you, and uh, I was quite moved by what was written about you. The 
press release written about you. I was very moved by that. And I truly enjoyed your Fashion Week, uh, your collection. And I'm hoping that you will do many, many New York Fashion Week collections. And hopefully I'll be able to come in person to see it. So yes. this year we had to do it, you know, virtual. And I'm interviewing you on Zoom. And, um, and I, maybe after I, this, maybe after this pandemic, we can see each other. Maybe we can yes. go back there. Yes, we could do a backstage at New York Fashion Week. I'm looking forward to that. Tell my audience where we could go to find out more information about your collection. Where can we go? What is the website? Uh, for the U for the U.S. orders, if you want to order in the there in the U.S., you can contact High Tech Moda for the uh, personal protective clothing, and then you can also visit my uh, Instagram account, which is Rian Fernandez eight eight eight, for yeah. you to see uh, all my creations there. So now we are going to take a look at your collection, Rian Fernandez 2020 at New York Fashion Week, which showed um, in one of the studios and then they had it uh, shown on a screen, on the NASDAQ screen in Times Square. How exciting is that? So now let's take a look at this fabulous fashion show. Welcome everyone, hello. It's uh, Pamela Prevet, P.S. Prevet from High Tech Moda. We are here live in New York City, season four. I didn't think I was gonna make it. I really, really didn't think I was gonna make it. You know, the city, you know, is resilient. New York is a resilient city. I'm happy to be here. We do have uh, social distancing in place, masks in place. We also have a very small, uh, actually 40 people, that's our models and our staff. But you know something? I'm happy to be here. I have to tell you, we've gone through so much as a country, the world, New York. I just can't, I mean, it's, it's making me emotional. And you know what? I am enthusiastic about fashion will survive. I think it's a great time for that independent designer now to go ahead. There's a gap in the market. Let's walk through it. But I can't forget the people we've lost lives. We've lost people have lost their jobs. People have really gone through a lot of hardship. So I never want to act like that everything is just wonderful. But what we will do is we will rebuild one step at a time. I wasn't going to come into New York. I have to tell you, I was, you know, just like everyone else, I wasn't sure what was going on. But you know what? I happened to season two, Rian Fernandez, he and I connected, and I saw his collection, Armored Warfare. It is literally a collection that was designed to help combat uh, uh, the anti COVID antivirus. Now, what I mean combat it is that you can wear this clothing and it literally protects you, it's an extra protection. So I tell you what, I'm having a little difficulties getting a hold of Rion and Catherine Schuler, but you know what, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start the show. I want to say welcome to New York. We are live from Baza Studio, great place, very happy to be here. And we'll go ahead and start with Rion Fernandez, Armor Wear Wayfair.
Welcome back, darlings. I hope you enjoyed my fashion show and my interview with the interview and the fashion show by designer Rian Fernandez. Rian, darling, tell my audience where can we go to learn more information one more time. What is the website? For orders for uh, in the U.S., you can uh, visit High Tech Moda. You can contact them, or maybe you can visit my Instagram account, which is uh, Rian Fernandez eight eight eight. Fabulous! And thank you so much, Rian, for that wonderful interview. And keep watching Cognex Corner for more Zoom celebrity Zoom interviews, more fashion interviews, more designers, more wonderful people. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Pink Champagne Kisses. Well, I hope you enjoyed my interview with Philippine fashion designer Rian Fernandez. His designs were unique, they were innovative, and they were very clever. It's all about armor, a suit of armor to protect us against the environment. So keep watching. More Zoom interviews coming up. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing fur dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.